rap, sports, 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 rap, 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 Everything sports culture. Rap. Sports, sounds, and sneakers. And boom goes again. And now, sports rap. Sports rap live. With Adam Rap. Adam Rap. Andrew Martinez. Martin Martinez. Andrew Doma. Not to mention Tito the DJ. Welcome to Sports Rap Live, everybody, on Sports Talk 790, the brand new home for your Houston Rockets. As the party continues tonight, the draft party and the NBA draft wrap up show right here on Sports Rap Live at Junction Bar and Grill, 160 West Gray in the shadow of downtown Houston, Texas, where the Rockets' red glare shines over Toyota Center and the bombs bursting in there. I tell you what, man, and the bombs bursting in here as they have the best bar of food in H Town, hottest wait staff in the city, coldest drinks around. 42 screens of live sports action, including the Rockets this fall for the 2012-2013 season, and the trillest sports talk on air. And it got real trill today as the Rockets had the trifecta, the three-pick first round draft in the 2012, to, to finish out the 2012 NBA season. And uh, there's been a lot of mystery. I don't know if you want to drop some X-Files right off the top, Tito, but there's been a lot of mystery. There's been a lot of talk. There's been a lot of conspiracy. There's been a lot of rumors. But the Rockets take the three picks as of now, and we will get into those in just a little bit. Andrew Martinez is here, and he's been watching round one into round two right off the bat to tell you guys exactly where everybody went in the draft and which team got the most value out of their picks in the draft. And if you guys want to get in on any of the NBA draft talk tonight or the Rockets talk, you can do so by calling the Ghost Pepper Hotline. Which that's, is? That's the Silverleaf Ghost Pepper Hotline at 713-212-5790 as we take you around the world of sports, sounds, and sneakers. Yes, yes we sir. will get into sneakers later in the show. Late, late. Yeah, show. late night style after this entire draft is wrapped up and you guys know exactly what's going on, including all the trade rumors. But we're going to bring it to you. Courtesy of Diamond Supply Co. and DiamondSupplyCo.com. That life. Where well, the Rat Pack got their shine on tonight. Oh, yeah. And shout out to the homie Select Sean for uh, sending some goodies. Kodoma just arrived late, but I've got something in the car for you as oh, well, that's sir. A, that's the truck, man. Can't wait. Absolutely, absolutely. They got the award, the Five Diamond Award from the Hardware Society. And uh, I've got that tea for you, Kodoma. So I'm going to lace you up. And they lace this up, and we're all shining tonight. But the new summer collection is out and available now if you want to go to DiamondSupplyCo.com or you cruise to West Hollywood and you go to 451 North Fairfax and holler at Yusuf and young Corey who will be out at the H-Town Sneaker Summit July 29th at Reliance Center. Hey, I like the sound of that Five Diamond Award. Shout out to our executive producer, Bun B, who gave out an award of his own tonight. Sure did. Yeah, sure is. What's it with you Houston Press Awards. The Web Awards, I'm sorry. Web Awards, yep. yeah. And speaking of the Houston Press Awards, we have some uh, nominees in the building tonight. We have some nominees that are definitely part of the Rat Pack, and that is 220 Music. Congratulations, DJ Auditory, best DJ, best mixtape for the following, and of course, best group in Houston. And another group that you've seen right here at Sports Rap After Dark, and that is Lower Life Form, who was also nominated for Best Group. So how do you vote for those Rat Pack artists right there? You know what? You can follow them what on you Twitter. May ask. You follow yeah. them on Twitter at 220 Music. That's 220 Music. And they're putting those, they're putting them out constantly. Those Twitters are hot right now. Those tweets are hot. And you can vote for them and some of your other favorite artists from H Town that you have been known to pop on Sports Rap Live from time to time. So, uh, hey, we got the Rat Pack is in the building. We got to shout out the Rat Pack, of course. They're here. We're on late tonight. We got the kids calling. They're wondering where Dad is. Yeah, we're going on late. We're going all the way to midnight tonight. So I hope you guys ride with us. Yeah. But you know what? The Rat Pack is ready to take on the Red Rowdies as the wildest sports fans in H-Town. And maybe we're just going to have to join forces now that Sports Talk 790 has joined forces with the Houston Rockets. Official. To be the broadcast partners for the foreseeable future. And we could not be more excited to get down there because tonight has been all about the Rockets and what they're going to do. Hey, we're no strangers to the Houston Rockets and the Toyota Center. Absolutely not. Absolutely. Yeah. We kind of outgrew the Toyota Center with our uh, 
our big sneaker event. And you yeah. guys know that we do talk sneakers here on the show, but we promise you to bring all the draft action tonight. And Andrew, your thoughts right off the top. So far through about a round and a half, your thoughts on the draft? My initial thoughts are that I'm, I'm sort of disappointed that the trades that could be happening cannot be announced until the draft is sort of over because we don't know if the Rockets right now are drafting for the current Rockets team or they're drafting for another team already. Um, I mean, there are trades that we've heard trickle through, but they can't be made official yet. So my initial thoughts are that not a lot of trades yet. I mean, there's two trades that I know of that are sort of unofficial so far through this trade. But we also don't know what's yet to happen with the Rockets. But my initial thoughts are, I thought there would be a lot more volatility as far as trades that could go down, well, and Andrew, a lot haven't. Andrew, you know why there's no trades going down, right? Stern? Why? Because, because Emperor Stern has to go down the list and approve all the trades. Uh, or, he might, or, he might rescind them, or he might rescind them, like he did last, this uh, earlier offseason. Absolutely, but you threw up a, a tweet at Antinez, A-N-D-T-I-N-E-Z, today that said that the Rockets were absolutely... Not interested in Captain Flopper anymore. Yeah, that was from Chris Broussard, yeah. which I'm sure made your day. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm glad you threw that my way because I never knew why they were interested in him in the first place. There, there was some reports that their interests swayed to Sideshow Bob. That could, we could be getting very shot. But I, I, like I said before, you know, half the draft is who gets picked, you know, by their team who has a, you know, a new asset, and half of it is who got traded because it's a lot of clearing space to teams who are building and really starting that whole process versus teams that are trying to acquire different pieces. I mean, there were rumors that we heard today about Bradley Beal maybe picked by the Thunder with a trade that could have happened with uh, James Harden. That didn't come to pass as of yet. We don't know, but that's what I'm saying about the trades. A lot of things I thought that could have happened did not. I was surprised that we didn't see a trade with Cleveland uh, moving up to number two because I think they, the guy they really wanted was Bradley Beal who ended up moving down a spot but I think when he moved, when he moved down to we'll get into all that but I was surprised that Cleveland didn't, wasn't able to make a trade there and I was sort of surprised that Houston while acquiring those picks wasn't able to officially pull off something we'd heard a lot of rumors they were trying to get into the top ten because that was a pick or they could have gotten a player that Orlando might have coveted but that wasn't the case so my biggest takeaway so far is trades that did not happen that could have happened. Well, you mentioned Orlando. Why would we be talking about Orlando? What's the big buzz this week? Well, I mean, it's still the Dwight Howard. He still is flip-flopping as to whether he wants to stay or wants to, you know, go. And as to what they – and the other thing you have to factor in is they have a GM that just came over from Oklahoma City within the last week. So it's really this GM has to figure out – not only you know what assets he has, but what moves he wants to make. So we could definitely see a scenario where we're still talking about Dwight Howard all the way up until the trade deadline of this upcoming season. I'm talking about, talking about that, especially with the new GM being pretty green and you know these moves that he has to take in consideration. He's pretty much the only guy in the front office right now. True. He, I mean, as a GM, you, I'm not sure that he really has all his whole team intact. I'm sure he probably has the guys around him that he wants to have. But you also have to question. Like, whenever I saw the picks today that uh, Orlando was making, you have to wonder were those old guys that OKC was high on. Because he might have figured out, you know what, they've done their own reconnaissance on guys, and so he's kind of going off the draft board and his own homework that he did with OKC. Well, the thing with the Rockets is, is we still haven't seen the big move. We, we've seen the draft picks that Daryl Morey has put in place, but all he's doing is taking those draft picks, and for a couple of years we say, oh, look how smart Daryl Morey is. But then right. in the end, those picks in... Wow. Come on, to be focused. Those picks end up being tokens for new picks. Right. And I'm tired of this, we've, this cycle. Well, we've been acquired. Well, Come on. That, that's more on Stern than anything because we acquired a lot of assets in the past offseason to try and acquire, acquire a guy you don't like, but in the Soul. So he has been trying to make that big move, and I think that big move is coming. The word I've been hearing and the word, things I've been reading is that the, the theory is that Rory, in theory, wants to get enough clear enough cap space to where they can trade for Dwight Howard and they can sign Darren Williams. Here's a theory. And here's he, a theory. Hold on. And he yeah. just wants to think that he, he thinks that if he can have those two guys on the same roster for a whole season, that they'll want to stay together because the, the long whole theory is that Dwight Howard wants to play with Darren Williams, so he thinks he can get them on the same team together here in Houston. That Dwight will want to return. Yeah, we said the same thing about Mello. We said the same thing about who else could Were we talking about Chris Bosh? Chris Bosh was supposed to be a rocket. I mean, right. And, uh, and I'm not saying that still might not happen, you know, with the whole Darren Williams and, and Dwight Howard thing. But, you know, Darren Morey has been trying to acquire assets. But the other part of that factor is that it's tough to acquire assets and get that player there if the player doesn't want to come. And Dwight Howard has already publicly come out and said that he, if, if he's straight to the Rockets, he will not resign. 
you know, so there's a, it's a big debate right now amongst Rockets fans. If, if we were able to pull off the trade tomorrow and we all well, well and knew that Dwight Howard did not want to stay, would that be okay for Rockets fans knowing that we were going in a huge gamble? It's a great question. It's, it's a huge gamble that you would be going into, stepping into. That is a it great question. It would be probably the biggest gamble that Del Del Mar would be stepping into. I honestly would like to hear what the fans out there think, the Rockets fans out there, 713-212-5790. Call in tonight. We will get you on yep. air all night long. And, and if you if you like what we're doing and you like how we're wrapping up the draft, you know what? We're going to be on a lot of nights on Sports Talk 790 after a lot of Rockets games because normally we're on from 8 to 10 p.m. on Thursdays and Sundays. Well, depending on how the Rockets do, we might not be on that many Thursday nights because that Thursday night is usually reserved for the doubleheader for the TNT. So the National we'll game. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that's what I'm, uh, I was taking away so far is that, you know, there are trades that still have yet to happen that have and I thought more would happen. I'm still up in the air as how I feel about the Rockets if they were to acquire Fire Dwight Howard and then publicly stating he doesn't want to stay here. Well, look, let me be a hammer, and I'm going to put this nail right through it, right here. We do not want Dwight Howard in this town. Well, you don't want Dwight Howard. Well, okay, I'm well, sorry. I'll speak okay. for yourself. Okay, yeah, you I'd like to have him. I change my mind. Okay, I do, not, I do not want Dwight Howard on this Rockets team. I mean, what is one year going to do you? The guy has already said to, he's gotten his GM fired. He's gotten a great coach in the NBA fired. All he has to do is go out there and dominate, and now he's saying, oh, if I get traded to the Rockets, I'm not staying well, the other half Well, the other half of that conversation is not, you know, do we want him? It's also, does Orlando want to trade him to the Houston? Because there's also scenarios where they could still trade him to uh, New Jersey. Like, it's still to be, we're pretty much up against New Jersey as to who's going to offer the better package, and there's probably other teams as to whether they could offer something. But that's really the other partner that's out there. They really could trade him to them. So there's still a lot of debate. Is, you know, even if we could pull out that trade, would Orlando even want to trade him to Houston? What for, the, for the players required tonight. What happened to the rumors of the Rockets getting the number two pick? And I'm going to tease this because we got to get to break. But what happened to the number two pick that the Rockets could have jumped up and had Kid Gilchrist, which I think is more of a sure thing than bringing in Dwight Howard for a year? That's also up for debate. I, I think that they really wanted to, but I think that there was just not enough. I think you also have to realize that, you know, between those teams of Charlotte, Cleveland, and Washington, who are all right there in the 2-3-4, who all could probably pull off some sort of trade to get to that number two spot, they probably didn't feel that the, the picks that the Rockets had acquired were high enough upside to get to that pick of, of a Michael Heat Gilchrist or a Bradley Beal. And we can debate we can debate, uh, debate Beal versus Kid Gilchrist because that's going to be a long standing sort of debate between those two players. I'm actually surprised, you know, that Charlotte ended up taking Kate Gilchrist over Beal, which I think Beal is the maybe the higher upside, but Gilchrist is the safer pick. So, I, you know, I, I think that most of those teams didn't really want to deal, you know, with the Rockets as far as getting those picks. <coughs> we'll talk more about that. We'll actually open up the rap sheet when we get back from our first break. We're off and running here. Run it. For our, uh, and we still have to announce who the Rockets took as far no, as the No, no, we're going to go, go through the entire first round, and we're going to keep it here till midnight and tell you about this entire NBA draft and how your Rockets may look next season as you hear them right here on Sports Talk 790 and iHeartRadio. So you guys stick around. We'll be right back. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sports Talk Live will be right back, back, back. 